Well, today we're gonna install something on my toilet. Let's take a peek. Welcome back to Geek Smart, and we're back with another video install. And uh, thanks to COVID-19, I thought more about toilet paper in the last several months than I ever have, especially at the beginning. Um, and this is something that I've been thinking about doing for a very, very long time. I've kind of gone over whether or not I do a bidet or not, or that, that, and of course, as uh, time has progressed, these things have gotten better, um, definitely more enhanced. And uh, so this is the bio bidet bb2000 which for all intents and purposes is definitely one of the best rated uh bidets on the market so i kind of went through um ratings things like that trying to find a good place to buy this where i got a, a, at least a decent price on it because they're not cheap either uh, i'll definitely say that so i bought this with my own money this is something i haven't asked about this is uh the bio bidet bb2000 and uh let's open the box let's see what's inside all right, let's see, but I've already, I've just cut the box. I have not taken it out yet. I haven't done anything within the box yet. So, this is new to me, just take you. So, water does it better. Uh, I'll find you. That's a nice piece of cardboard on the top. Okay. All right. There's the fancy control mechanism, controller for it. Uh, just 3M VB tape. Looks like we have all of our hose connections our uh, seat attachment pieces. All that's in this nice bag here, so we'll set that off to the side. Okay, thanks for your purchase. Free deluxe dual shower system. Three winners every month. Hey, look at that. Chance to win some more stuff from Bio Bidet. We got our fancy instruction booklet here, which I'm sure I'll go over before I get too far into it. And then we got the actual bidet itself. So let's lift this guy out. Yep, nothing else in here. It's styrofoam. And let's remove the box. And here we are. So it's already, I mean obviously it's in a bag. We'll talk about more about its features obviously once we get it set up. And then eventually we'll do a full review on it on Tech Gooch with it. But there she is. All the mechanisms in the back back here. It's not adding a ton of distance between the seat and everything, but you know, that is what she looks like by itself, I guess. Uh, all the hoses and everything looks like we have the, uh, I think that actually is the plate that goes between the two. Yeah, all the pieces that are in here. I'm gonna go through the mounting instruction book real quick. Take a peek at it. I would recommend it, obviously, if you purchase this as well to, to do it. I'm gonna highlight anything that I see in here that's uh, definitely something that you wanna know. And then we're gonna install this on my toilet and make sure my toilet's clean, right? <laughs> so yeah, maybe let's head upstairs and uh, work on getting it installed. Now, to, I will say this as well for uh, anything and everything. Uh, the power cord portion of it uh, I am eventually actually going to run a power outlet to it. Um, I wanted to wait to make sure that it came out, which side it came out or whatever. For this intense, for this purpose, for this video, I'm just going to actually do an extension cord. That way we can get the video shot. Um, but eventually I will actually put in a proper power uh, port for this um, with the uh, GFI circuit and everything on it. So uh, for this video, you'll see this plugged into an extension cord that's going to be plugged into my outlet that's in my bathroom already. So that said... Let's head upstairs. All right, we're at the throne of justice, right? Got my handy Lysol. I've kind of just sprayed it over a little bit, cleaned the seat off a little bit. We're gonna be removing the seat. That's our, gonna be our first step. There are two bolts on the toilet that just basically unthread from behind. I've been taking my seat off for a very long time and actually the, there's covers can pop up. So if you, they're really tight, um, they're just a slotted screwdriver, which is something I may have to go grab because they're kind of just an, oh, no, I got that one. But they just, 
Once I get it off, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. I'll probably grab a screwdriver because now it's kind of getting stuck probably from stuff that's on it. It's just a plastic screw. Oh, no. Really long threads. But it's just a plastic screw, right? Slotted head, and then it, but it does have this thing that, so you can hold on to it. You don't need a wrench, right? So if you have a slotted screwdriver, it's going to make it faster. Um, sometimes you can get them off without. Sometimes you need it. So far. I'll be right back. And so that's what they look like. I, I did it or was able to get it off without uh, any screwdrivers. But now the seat is fully separated. Now you get the grossness behind there that you can't really clean all the time. Now we're going to actually disconnect the water. So I'm going to first, um, usually what you have down here is a turn, uh, shut off valve. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Uh, it's hard for me to reach at this angle, but shut it all the way off. And what we got to do is we're going to have to get this tank to drain because we are going to have to disconnect this. Now I have a solid pipe here. Uh, you may not have a solid pipe, you may already have uh, a stainless steel line, uh, like a, uh, well, like one of these right here. If you already have a, a line like this, um, you're good. This is going to be, you don't have to use this, but it does come with one of these guys. I'm hoping that this is the right threading that I have down there. I may have to get an adapter. It looks like it's, eh, we'll find out. But let's drain the tank. I'm just going to hold it open, make sure all of it dumps out best we can. And it shouldn't be supplying any more water. And you can hear that it's not running. You can always check it to make sure it's not running. Doesn't look like we have any more water coming in. Now we are going to get a little more water, a little bit of water when we take this off. But you can see that there is. And now up here we have to remove that one, and I also have to remove this one. I have to take this whole piece out because this is solid, and I have to replace it with a flexible hose. So I'm going to do that real quick. It's going to be a lot easier. It's going to be hard for me to film it. So I'm just going to undo this one, and then I'm going to put a little bucket down below down there because you are going to get a little bit of water, not a whole lot. So quick and easy, I just took a, my adjustable wrench, my crescent wrench right now. Um, and knock that guy out. So there's my old solid tube. Now I had to bend this guy a little bit to get it out. I didn't want to take the tank off. Uh, so I just kind of bent it and then she popped out. Um, but that's what she looks like. So on, on top of mine, this is the top one tank side. It was just hand tightened on the bottom one. It was just a small wrench. Now it's going to be the same threading, thankfully. And that's all the water I got, just a little bit. Basically just enough that fills this tube. That's all the water that was in there. So this tube is gonna go back here. This is really long, um, so I'm probably gonna have to do a little twisty in there. Um, but let me uh, put the stuff together so you understand how it's gonna go together. Now the instruction manual is pretty vague, but it's pretty simple. Because you have your main supply line, if you can see that here. So we're gonna branch off that, so it still supplies the toilet, and then the, uh, there's a T that goes over to the actual bidet itself. Now it's of course on the handle side of the toilet, so we're good in that re respect. Um, and we have a lift cord no matter what. This is the supply line they give you for the bidet, which goes off this big T line. So this essentially is what's gonna go directly into the toilet. This is gonna branch off it uh, to go to the, bidet, the, to the bidet. And then this is gonna go down here so we're going to feed off of it kind of like that, right? So we have throughput to the toilet and then to the bidet. So pretty simple. They give you all this. This is all from the kit. They even have um, an elbow if you need it that comes with it. They have a reducer um, if you need that. So they give you a lot of various parts that I'm not even going to have to use. Um, in this case, this is a really long supply line. Um, so for now, mine's probably going to look like that. Um, and I'll obviously show you once I get it done. Because again, it's really hard for me to get the video down here to show you as I do it. Um, but we're just threading this on, thread it on. Now I might, no, you don't really not usually have to because this has good rubber seals. But if you wanted to put like some uh, PTFE sealant or whatever on here, on the pipe sealant, you could technically do that. Um, the size of this guy, if you wanted to crank this down with a wrench, which I'm going to, uh, my crescent wrench, or my adjustable wrench, sorry, is not big enough for this. This is a one inch wrench, and I don't know where my large uh, adjustable wrench went. 
um, but we can just crank that guy down and get it nice and tight now. Uh, same thing with the bidet line, and then get it to the toilet and then do this last or whatever, whatever works for you. So I'm gonna do that real quick, and then I'll actually show you what it looks like before we go to the next step. Okay, so this is what she looks like right now. I did get this one hand tightened on here. Right now I have it coming out this way, but I can obviously turn this if I needed to, to take up some of the slack. Uh, I have my little curly hue there, and then connected here. This is an 11, I used an 11 16 wrench, worked great on that. Um, and then you just gotta be careful, because if you start tightening that, it's gonna start turning this with it. So you gotta be mindful a little bit of that. Uh, but should be all set there. When you're turning this onto the actual toilet part itself, you may have to take the lid off and kind of hold on to this guy so it doesn't turn with it, because that's basically what you're, you're uh, spinning onto is the bottom part of this, the filler part. So that's that. Okay, so before I take my workbench apart off and reveal the toilet and then start installing, this is the back plate. It basically, it mounts back there that this toilet slides into. Uh, these are the bolts. Um, the, the nuts are already pre on there, and this, as well as the rubber washer that's going to go on the bottom side. And then this metal part actually, this is this part. So I take the nut and the washer off. This will drop through here, and it drops through there like that. So we can basically get a lot of movement and, and, and slide it into position and then tighten it down. So we have two, one for each side. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to actually put those up here actually. Um, take my other one apart, I guess, real quick as well. I want to get this off and then I want to clean that area before we actually start mounting. So I'm going to do that real quick. Bye bye, workbench. Okay. So that's going to go back here like this. And we're going to adjust that later. Um, we're going to drop that guy through that hole. We're going to drop this guy here. And you can see there's a flange on it. That's going to face up because essentially it's for that uh, nut. So if we went the other way, but there's nothing for it to sit in there and actually hold on to. So now we won't even have to have a slot of screwdriver to hold it, right? It's going to hold itself just by that. So we slide it into there like that. And then we want the rubber washer cone side up so it fits up into the porcelain hole and the nut around it. And of course another spot that it's really hard to show you on video, but slide it up and tighten it up. I'm not going to crank it tight yet. Yeah. So we still be able to slide it a little bit, right? But I have it snug is the best way to put it, right? And we're going to adjust it back and forward, side to side, to adjust the, toilet, the seat itself to fit the toilet. So with that said, now we should be able to take the actual bidet and slide it into place. So on the back side here, this is the bottom, this is where that, that clip is going to slide into here and the back clip is going to actually clip into that it looks like. I'm going to, actually it probably won't matter because it's going to overhang, um, but I'm just going to grab this and kind of stick it out front so it's easier for me to take off afterward. Just trying to think ahead. Um, these are shipping tapes, you know, I'm going to just take the blue ones off. That's for the dryer it looks like. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, put it on the rail, Let's see if it's easy to, oh, there we go. I can actually, let me show you before I slide it back. So it's pretty easy to see when it actually gets in the rail. And then we're just gonna slide straight back and she clicks into place, look at that. So now, alignment. I'll tell you real quick, a lot of these steps are in any order. I put the bay on last and do the water thing first because I had a workbench. I didn't want to really, really scratch this up with all my tools. So basically I have that all hooked up other than we are going to have to hook the water line up to the actual bidet on the side here, which we can do at any point now. Um, I'm going to get this aligned and then do that. Um, so essentially what you're doing now is just aligning this thing with your toilet. In this case, I'm going to move it back. So I kind of want to, you know, get as much surface area. I'm going to take these off right now since I don't need them. Um, so now we have it lined up. And you can play with this later if you need to adjust it. Um, but I would want it, it is using as much of the bowl size as possible. So I'm fairly confident and happy with that. 
I still got space behind. The lid stays up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten these nuts down real quick. And we're not going for like crazy tight. We're just tightening nice and tight. Okay. It's great when you get tape on your foot. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the water supply line on this side. Which, looking at it right now, is probably going to be my one gripe about this machine. In that, there, out of all the places you could put the water supply line, it just shoots straight out the side of the unit. That's probably what that is for. I don't really like it shooting straight out. I'm gonna put the 90 degree angle on it. And that's where I was talking about earlier about moving this around to where it, where it makes sense. But that is a lot better. Okay. Uh, I would highly recommend using the 90 degree. I'm assuming that maybe you have to. But that said, let me show you what it looks like on the side. So we have our water supply line here coming in and then going back. So out of this whole process, this is the ugliest thing right here. I wish that you could actually hide that, but of course every toilet, every toilet is different. Um, so it's hard to say what it's going to look like on various toilets. If, if you actually had it sticking at the bottom, would it work? Maybe that's why they do it. But that's the one thing I, I honestly don't enjoy too much about that. But that said, after I, you're probably not even going to pay attention to that. So now we have everything hooked up. All the water lines are good. Let's do a water test and see if we have any leaks. Uh, reach back here. Turn it on. All the way open. And now it's going to be one of those things that you're going to want to watch it for a little while. It's not just right now. It's going to be over the next several you know, hours, if that. You just got to check to see if you have any leaks. If you do have any leaks, then obviously go back and tighten things up. Um, we're going to give it some time. So I did have a small leak, but not on the, my fitting. When I was obviously tightening this, this guy up here loosened up a little bit. It looks like I had to clean under here a little more. <laughs> spots you don't can't see from above so I, I tightened that up and it seemed to fix the leak that I had um, I don't feel anything else but of course I'm gonna keep an eye on it for the next day uh, you don't want any water leaks that's the big thing so definitely keep an eye on that make sure there's no water sitting down here or puddling down below and for some reason it wasn't recording this last segment I apologize but all I was going over was um, don't use any harsh chemicals. They don't want you to harsh chemicals at all. Um, if you're going to use chemicals on your toilet, which most people do on the porcelain side, don't let it get on the bio bidet. They don't want any chemicals on it. It can actually damage the fire return and PP resin that this thing is built out of. So if you're going to clean the bio bidet, water and a soft cloth, that is it. Nothing else. Uh, also, this skin sensor, this sticker that says skin sensor, was sitting on here. This bio bidet will not work unless you're actually sitting on it or at least skin is touching the seat skin is contact is required to use this thing so that is a nice safety feature it's not going to spray you in the face me standing here and if i hit a button it's not going to squirt me in the face unless i was leaning against it i guess with my hands um like i said before i am not running power in this video i do have an extension cable i plugged it in and then it kind of did this startup thing and then you could hear it squirt a little bit so it was obviously prepping the system getting water in it um but yeah that's all i that's all I was doing. And then uh, I put the batteries in the remote. So the remote is does have the 3M VHB tape, I think. Uh, but it is a, just a slide-on thing. You can actually screw it in as well, if you or both, if you'd like. Um, if you are going to mount it below the lip of a countertop like this, um, make sure you mount it low enough that it can slide up and out, right? Because it has to go to about that height there to actually come out. So that gives you at least a, an idea of how high or how low to mount it so you can easily get it out. That, or if you're gonna put it on a surface like uh, my tile over here, uh, we're not worried about at all. You can just stick it wherever you wanna stick it. For this purpose, I'm not mounting it to a surface because I don't know exactly where I wanna mount it yet. I'm gonna use it first. Um, I'm just gonna leave it set on the countertop itself. Um, but, nightlight version is on. There is buttons on the side over here, and I'll show you there. They're actually lit up blue. 
Um, so yeah, there we go. This video will have me sitting on this getting getting blasted in the in the behind PC, right? I'm gonna cover myself real good, but that's coming out. <laughs> You'll see my initial reaction the first time I've ever had this happen to me. So, um, but yeah, let's look at the remote. Let's see what that does. Just on the unit real quick, you can see occupied sensor, energy saver, and power. We are getting power. And then like I said, the blue back here, you can see stop. Looks like butt wash, front wash, I would assume for ladies. But that's the buttons that are on the side there. One more item, sorry, before the remote. If you need to remove this from your toilet, um, obviously when we pushed it back, it clicked into place. There is a button right here, right next to the power line. The power line drops down and then there's a little button. You can feel it, it actually pushes in. You push that in it and it unlocks it and it's supposed to, yep, there it slides off. And so if we push it back, should click, it clicks into place. And so now we're back into place and so we should be good. So that said, now let's go to the remote. So here's the remote and then we have a function here that shows you all the different functions. Posterior wash, there we go. Feminine wash, dry, wa uh, dry washed area. So we have a dry button, that'd be the fan there. Vortex wash, that sounds like fun. Um, so a whole bunch of these that we can go through as well. Time, right now it's not that time. And time, there we go. So it's just click the time, one's hours, one's minutes, and that even, even shows it on the thing, the minute, hour hand and the minute hand. So pretty easy there. Power save, motion. If economy mode is selected, seat temperature and water temperature will stay at 89.6 degrees. Um, so obviously there's heated seats, but you can choose to do whatever. Um, so the, so we have, this is stop all operations, posterior wash, feminine wash, and then dry. We have the vortex wash, that must be the, let's scrape this heavy load off. <laughs> Uh, when selected during wash function, nozzle oscillates automatically for a wider wash. That's this, this air, double ended arrow item. Auto, when selected during wash function, it start massage wash. Right on. When user sits in the seat, it automatically operates to deodorize. So that's the deodorizer right there. That's probably something I can use. <laughs> uh, the water temperature can be adjusted up to four levels off low middle and high that's the middle button right here and so right now we have it at it's off right now we'll put it on low medium high depending on the time of year summertime probably a nice cool wash feels good the degrees fahrenheit that's the seat temperature can be adjusted off low medium and high right now it's off low medium high so you can just see the basically it's like a cell phone bar right uh, so during the winter time, that's something that I probably we'll use. And we had, like I said, we had the power saver mode, um, up, down, plus, minus. That's going to be for adjusting certain things, I'm assuming. And uh, yeah, so let's see here. Something I wanted to show real quick. So we had the power button light, like I said. Um, if you watch that one, I, I'm just going to put my hands on the seat. So on the seat here, like my butt cheeks, you can see the occupied sensor came on. So now it knows that I take my hands off and occupied sensor then goes off. So yes, the skin touch sensor does function properly. Okay, so here we are. For the benefits of this channel, I am sitting on my toilet with my bum fully exposed. Remote in hand. Uh, trying to keep my skin to a minimum on this channel. I'm going to use the posterior wash function. Okay, yep, there she hit. And she is spot on the money. All right. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it doesn't feel fine. I'm assuming that it's gonna wash real good. Now I don't know if it's auto mode. If I hit stop when I'm good, I just hit the stop button there. Um, I'm gonna try this vortex mode. I'm almost kind of scared to hit it. So that's the uh, second row first button here on the on here. This is the vortex mode. A little 
little bit different. I'm not going to say it's got a whole lot more pressure to it. Uh, let's hit the oscillating, I guess. Oh, oh, that's different. <laughs> right on. Okay, that is that is interesting. Uh, what's this hump button do? Oh, uh, that oscillates. And I can turn any of these functions off as I go. Um, go back to standard posterior wash. It must be a different nozzle because it's obviously changing it out. And there we go, that's just the standard posterior wash now. Um, interesting, and I hit the stop button. I'm good, I feel good. It's definitely washed. Um, for science, I'm gonna hit the feminine wash. Now I'm kind of scared, but that's going to hit on me. Okay, that's a little different. It's still in the back area, so, but it is, it's a little bit different spot, and it feels differently, that's for sure. Okay, I'm gonna, now I'm going to do the dryer. So that's this big fan button, and again, we don't have the heating on. I'm going to just throw the fan out. Ooh. You can definitely tell that's not directly in line. It's just kind of blowing air across. Uh, and so, I'm not going to say it feels bad at all. Oh, it's got a little warmth to it. I'm not going to say it's hot. Well, I guess I don't have the seat, the seat heater or the water heater on, but the dryer is definitely warm. That makes sense, right? Like a hair dryer. So, there is a timer counting down. Uh, seemed like it maybe started at three minutes. And so, you got three minutes of drying, and then you're done. Um, you don't have to do that. The big thing about this, obviously, is you're saving toilet paper. But even if you just use toilet paper to dry yourself, um, you're using a lot less toilet paper than just wiping it all over yourself. So, you know, the point of this bidet was, yeah, save toilet paper, save money on the toilet paper. You're spending a lot of money up front, so it's not really going to, it's going to take a long time to pay for itself in, the, in terms of this, but it's also better hygiene. So, yeah. Not bad. It works as advertised. Time will tell, and when I do the full review, that'll be on TechGooch. I'll let you know what I actually think of it after using it in the real world. Me sitting on this and just doing the, the, the cycle is one thing. It's not really a review. This is just making sure it functions. Now, in a minute, I'm going to actually go back and uh, we're going to actually check to make sure we don't have any leaks. That's a double check. So we'll give it a second. Dry as a bone. Like I said, I'm going to monitor over the next at least 24 hours just to make sure a reel slowly doesn't happen. It's just something to keep an eye on. But that is the install of the BB2000 and the use of the remote. You know, it's kind of neat. It feels pretty good, I'll be honest. And uh, obviously the heated water function might be something to try down the road. But we are fully operational, good to go. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking, thanks for sharing. And we'll catch you back here for a future setup and video. Now, remember, I'm going to have a full review of this on TechGooch. That link will be in the top of the description as well, as well as where you can actually go purchase this if you're interested in yourself. Um, see if I can't put a couple links down there for you. Um, keep Be mindful, these are not inexpensive. Do your research on the various units that are out there, but also um, look for the best price. It's always a great thing, way to do it. So, Thanks for watching. We'll catch you here for a future setup here right here on Geek Smart. Thanks for watching, guys.